Representation is so important, and the entertainment industry is seeing that in a big way right now. At the time of review, the amount of thriving multicultural representation I see around me is almost baffling. In Hollywood, a film centered around an Asian immigrant family traveling through the multiverse became the most awarded film of all time. In sports, an ongoing global baseball tournament saw the Czech Republic win its first ever game on a stage it's never seen before, allowing the teachers and electricians that make up the team a taste of the glory that major leaguers see every single day. And in gaming, a small island nation just off the Australian coast saw itself placed at the center of an amazing little game called Chia. Chia is an open world adventure set on an archipelago heavily inspired and based on New Caledonia. The founders of the development studio, Awaseb, decided to make their sophomore release entirely dedicated to this cross-cultural island nation that they grew up in. Just as Zelda was born out of Miyamoto's adventures through the hills, forests, and caves of Japan, you certainly get the sense that Chio was born out of the adventuring and learning that co-founders Phil Crifo and Thierry Bura did throughout childhood in New Caledonia. Chia's New Caledonia-inspired story focuses in on its eponymous hero, Chia, as she travels across a fictional archipelago to rescue her kidnapped father and restore the land to its natural order. Evil spirit and disgusting worm beast Meavora has taken control of the islands with the help of the hatchet-wielding baddie Puidua and a legion of evil cloth spirits known as Mano. Together, their forces are sapping the energy of the island's natural resources and its people to fuel his growing power. To fight back, Chia teams up with the island's inhabitants, both physical and spiritual, on a quest to restore peace and reunite with her family. Armed with her trusty slingshot, a child's natural curiosity, and a newly discovered soul jumping ability, a power that allows her to inhabit animals and inanimate objects alike, Chia is a pitch-perfect hero. Having grown up on a remote island with her dad, Chia's perspective being the focal point is the perfect way to help foster this feeling of childlike wonder as you make your way through the islands. Forced into tasks she can't possibly understand the stakes of, Chia finds friendship, young love, and new purpose along her journey and all the while maintains an unending charm and youthful character, even when she's just rolling around as a rock. The framework of the narrative, being an elder passing on a story to a new generation of children, adds to that as well. That sharing of culture, passing down of legends and lore, it's one of the key pieces of the experience. From the entire team's trips to New Caledonia to make sure they got every detail right, to the quiet moments Chia and her companions share around a campfire, what's put at the center of everything here is the region's culture. Music, stories, art. On all levels, it's a celebration of New Caledonian culture and of the indigenous Kanak culture. And while I personally can't speak to how it may have been received, I can say this much from an outsider's perspective. It's beautiful. And I can only hope to one day see this level of representation for Filipino culture in gaming. One of my favorite parts is the use of Drehu, the primary language of the Kanak people. Working with local voice actors, the game is entirely voiced in Drehu and French layering in just another bit of valuable cultural immersion by showcasing a language that 
has only around 12,000 fluent speakers in the world. C'est la vie unique de la vie. Amélaïdeng, Chia. Even in the gameplay, cultural learning is a big part of Chia's journey. Every village she visits, every subculture she interacts with, Chia not only learns new mechanics from them, but also brings a bit of their visual style with her. Whether it's the French-speaking rancher-focused town of Weli Wele that passes down to her cowboy apparel, or the more traditional indigenous village of Hunami that teaches her face painting and traditional wood totem carving, Chia becomes a fuller person and better representative for the land as a whole as the game progresses. You'll find a deep customization system in Chia with tons of clothes, hairstyles, boat paint styles, and more. Awaseb does incredibly well weaving their love for the land into all aspects of the art, design, and story. Chia, in a way, presents itself like a classic Disney Renaissance era movie. Not just for its bright and colorful island setting, or its expressive and emotive character animation, or its animal-centric shenanigans, but for its use of music. Music is used as a main communication source for Chia. When emotions are too strong to explain with words, she breaks out her ukulele and plays, making music with someone in the scene as a light rhythm minigame starts up and a cinematic music video plays in the background. Music unifies her with these varied people, and the variety of styles on display is incredible. It's not a full-on musical by any stretch of the imagination, but when it's used, it's powerful. Especially when you consider the indigenous roots of these tracks. The work done here by composer John Robert Matz in conjunction with locals from New Caledonia is amazing. The soaring tracks that score Chia's rafting adventures and the quiet ukulele ballads that underscore some of the more emotional moments are so, so good. In Chia, music has magic. Literally. With a Zelda-esque ability to change the weather, or time of day, summon animals, and more, Chia's ukulele takes its place alongside the ocarina as one of gaming's best instruments. There's even a fully working simulated ukulele tool that allows you to play any song you like with note bending and the ability to alter notes on the fly. I don't know music, but it seems pretty accurate. But most importantly, the Disney vibes come across in one sneaky way, too. Even though it's a fairly family-friendly adventure in most ways, there are moments of genuine horror and shocking emotional darkness across this adventure that you'd expect from folk tales and classic Disney films alike. The story is fun and manages a few genuine surprises across its runtime, but don't expect this folk story to be an epic. It's a quick play, especially if you mainline the story and leave the exploring for another day, with it clocking out somewhere between 10 to 15 hours your first time through. We wish there was more, but you know we always advocate for shorter, more focused experiences, and Chia delivers just that. I could talk all day about the little ways that Awaseb's New Caledonian representation and narrative awed us, but how does this island adventure play? Well, let's start with Chia's open world design. Chia's take on the open world is, in its own way, a throwback to the early days of the concept. A cozier open world that doesn't ask too much of the player. 
one that defies the usual overwhelming nature of other open worlds by stripping away waypoints, hiding its mini-map to force you to navigate on your own, and keeping its focus on the beautiful nature around you. Lapping water, flowing vegetation, and the sound of nearby animals are mostly what you'll spend your time with, not piles of overlapping HUD elements and waypoint markers. Across the two main islands and the smattering of smaller islands you'll stumble across, it can sometimes be a bit confusing and frustrating to lose some of those hand-holdy systems we're used to, but thanks to the coziness of it all, it just works. It's so easy to chart a path to some far-off waypoint and find yourself wandering from landmark to landmark along the way, to head towards a main story quest and find yourself distracted by one of the island's side activities, like races that take place on foot, boat, or hoof. Maybe you're on your way to a meeting with Mayavora and find yourself distracted with one of the few games on the island, like Slingshot Target Practice or a traditional claw machine. Chia is a wandering first kind of adventure, one whose focus is on telling a fun story and selling the island vibes. So if you like your adventures a bit more guided or if you need more than fun and good vibes to push you forward, keep that in mind. Because of that stripped-back design philosophy, I realized that, despite my original comparison points that came to mind when the first few trailers came out, Chia is not exactly like a Breath of the Wild with its free climbing and stamina-based action. It's not totally Mario Odyssey with its flowing platforming or capture-based possession mechanic. No, after my time with Chia, it's like something else I never expected. It's a lot like Red Dead Redemption 2. The calm navigation, the teeming wildlife, the see-what-you-see vibe of its exploration. It's not as alive, grounded, or nearly as feature-full, but in its own way, Chia can hold its own simply because of its amazing representation and the magnitude smaller team behind it all. Navigating the island can initially be tricky, with the physics-driven and stamina-focused approach. But thanks to a handful of Chia's incredible abilities, coming to understand the island and the best way to make your way through it turns out to be one of the game's best qualities. For starters, Chia puts Link and Mario to shame through her innate climbing and jumping abilities. It starts small, with her power to climb any surface and do flips and tricks in the air, and eventually evolves into being able to fling herself from treetop to treetop as if she's flying through the air. Stamina holds you back in the early going, but find a few stamina fruit in the open world, chomp them down, and before you know it, you're a pro. It's one of the best feelings when you find that perfect path of trees to fling across, flipping and spinning in the air, flying from one end of an island to the other. A feeling only eclipsed by, well, actual flying. As previously mentioned, Chia has her own special kind of magic with her ability to soul jump. As her eye glows green, Chia is able to jump into any of the fauna that populate the islands and even some of the inanimate objects you come across, like rocks and oil lanterns. Inhabiting animals comes with unique abilities that are used for fun little puzzle solutions in a 21-step treasure hunting side quest, improved movement that surpasses the limits of Chia's human form, and a few goofs and gaffs too. It's a fun concept that never quite feels like it reaches its potential. With the game's hands-off, play-how-you-want-to-play mentality, it leaves things open for you to approach your goals however you like. That holds a fun idea back from genuinely having game-changing execution by not making it more necessary. 
by not spotlighting it with clever story-driven puzzles or interesting combat scenarios that require you to jump from object to object to win. Regardless, the feeling of squeezing into secret areas as a tiny crab or soaring through the sky to get to your next objective is pretty neat. It's a shame that the main story doesn't offer much variety in gameplay, mostly amounting in going from point A to point B, collecting resources for a traditional kotum, an offering of mutual respect between two parties, or taking photos with your film camera of whatever Mayavora is doing to destroy the island. A lot of the fun is hidden away in the side content, in the things that reward cosmetics, lore, and upgrades to your soul jump challenge rooms, races, combat encounters. You can miss it all if your focus is on the story, but if you roam like the game asks you to, and take on whatever's waiting for you around the bend, you'll find lots to enjoy. Chia's accessibility is another point worth mentioning. No singular aspect of this game is what I would call difficult. There's no game over state, combat is fairly optional and straightforward, and the hardest thinking you'll do is during one of the special totem-based challenge rooms or the aforementioned treasure side quest. There are a ton of comfort options that tackle not only controls, but even some of the more intense moments and cutscenes, offering the chance to trigger an even more family-friendly version of the story that skips right past these. It's a different kind of accessibility, and we appreciate their approach. Those seeking a challenge will be disappointed, but those seeking good vibes and a fun time will walk away satisfied. I am a self-admitted open-world goblin, and that kind of got in the way of what makes this game so great. I was looking for something more than cosmetics when accomplishing tasks and exploring through the world looking for the numbers to go up on my gear and stats. But that's not the kind of game Awasev was making here. If anything, it's the exact opposite. Chia got me to pull back, to stop and smell the roses, to be a kid again. It reminded me of the power of just wandering, of just picking a path and finding fun along the way. It helped me to appreciate the land under my feet and the people and the animals who walk it alongside me. Video games are good, and Chia is great. Eight out of 10. Thank you for watching this Video Games Are Good review. Visit videogamesgood.com to learn more about a review rubric or to read this review in written form alongside all of our other in-depth reviews. There, you can also join our Discord community, check out our merch, and stay tuned into everything happening at VGG. Thank you specifically to our patrons who help make this VGG video review possible. And thank you for watching, reading, and for all the ways you've supported us. See you next time. Good job.